So let's get into this lesson. Amen. Last week we talked about the mark of the beast. And when we was talking about the mark of the beast, we shared who the beast was. If you know who the beast is, you'll learn to look out for the mark of the beast. The issue is, is that a lot of people do not know who the beast is. And so I'm just going to recap a little bit so we can go back and just have a little summary of who the beast is. Because what we do know about is that Hollywood has dictated what the mark is. Hollywood has dictated what sign you're going to get in your forehead. Hollywood has dictated what sign you're going to get on your hand. And this is how the adversary works. If he gets you looking in the wrong direction, when he does mark you, you don't even know that you're being marked. Amen? Amen. Could you imagine some people say, well, you can't buy, you can't sell without that mark. I was thinking of this message this morning, and it reminded me before the Social Security card came out. Amen. Now, Elder Mac and Lady Mac, they may, I may have been able to go back to them, but some of y'all, you always had a Social Security number. But there was a time when you got that Social Security card, somebody says, oh, my God, it's the mark of the beast. Because you cannot buy or sell without that Social Security number. Oh, when the ATM card came, somebody said, oh, it's the mark of the beast. Some people think it's a barcode that's going to be in your head. Some people think it's a chip that's going to be inserted into your hand. And when you go into your job and they scan it, and they, they already have it, by the way, and some people say, no. I'm not going to let my job do nothing like that to me because it's the mark of the beast. My computer some years ago, you was able to take a little keypad and scan your thumbprint or your fingerprint. And some people say, you see, that's the mark of the beast. And while you're looking for the mark in the wrong direction, Dictated by Hollywood, you miss the beast. <laughs> Revelations, the 14th chapter. Revelations, the 14th chapter. Verses 9 through 12. We want to find out about this beast. We want to find out who this beast is. I'm just giving you a summary so we can understand who the mark of who the beast is. Because if you understand who the beast is, you'll get the mark. Amen. Amen. Revelations, the 14th chapter, read verses 9 through 12. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice. A third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice. If any man worship the beast uh -huh. and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. This is the most scariest scripture that people read today. They don't want to read it. They don't want to touch it. I don't want to learn about it. Preachers are not preaching about it. Nobody's talking about it. Nobody deals with the book of Revelations. Why? Everybody's afraid. But he says, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark, his mark in his forehead, in his forehead, or in his hand, or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine. You are going to drink of the Wine, of, wine the, of the wrath of God. Of the wrath of God. Which is poured out without mixture. Which is poured out without mixture. Into the cup of his indignation. In the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with and fire. And you're going to be tormented with fire. And brimstone. Uh-huh. In the presence of the holy angel. Uh-huh. And in the presence of the Lamb. And not only that, what's going to happen? And the smoke of their torture, their torment. And the smoke of their torment. Ascended up forever. Is going to be going up forever. And ever. And ever. 
And they have no rest. And you're not going to get no rest. Day or night. Day or night. Who worship the beast. Who worship the beast. And his image. And his image. And whosoever receiveth the mark in his name. Uh-huh. And whoever received the mark in his name. Amen. Read that next verse. Here is the patience of the saints. But here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. Everybody is not keeping the commandments of God. But this, it takes some patience to do this. Yes. Because you're going through and you're hearing a lot. You're, you're dealing with a lot. The world has gone crazy. There's laws that have changed that are against the commandments of God. Anybody can marry anybody. Pretty soon you'll be able to marry a dog and a cat and to be legal. Laws have just gone rampant. The hearts of many have waxed cold. Everybody is leaving the commandments of God. It's a challenge to get people to accept the Sabbath. It's a challenge to get people to look at the feast days. It's so much easier to say they've been nailed to the cross. It's so much easier to say we don't have to do that no more. We're under grace. It's so much easier to create a form of a religion that makes it easier to sanctify yourself instead of letting the word of God sanctify you. So we have a problem today. Go over to Revelations, the 13th chapter. 13th chapter. Because I want to give you this scripture to just let you know who the beast is. And I, stood I want you to read just verse 2. And the beast which I saw. And the beast that John, the revelator, saw. Was like unto a leper. He was like a leper. And his feet were as the feet of a bear. His feet was like a bear. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And his mouth was like the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power. And the dragon gave him his power. And his seat. And his seat. And great authority. And gave him his seat and his great authority. And what we learned last week, John is not the only one that saw this. Go over to uh, Daniel the seventh chapter. Daniel the seventh chapter. He's not the only one that saw this beast. Remember lion, leopard, and bear. Daniel the seventh chapter. Verse two and Daniel. Six I want and you six. to. I want you to start with verse three. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. Daniel had a dream, and in Daniel's dream. He saw these beasts of the earth coming from everywhere. He saw them coming up one by one, one by one. But I want you to remember the names over in Revelations. Bear, leopard, and lion. Read verse 4, just the first sentence. The first was like a lion. Uh-huh. And had eagle's wings. Read verse number 5, just the first verse. And behold, another beast. Uh-huh. A second one like a bear. Uh-huh. And it and read number six. After this I beheld and lo another like a leopard. There you go. Lion, bear, leopard. This is the beast. And the beast is a man. It's a system that goes contrary to the word of God. And now that we know who the beast is, I told you on last week that this second subject is is how not to receive the mark of the beast. And I'm here to tell you today, if you think it's a chip or a barcode or some super computer that's keeping information, that's technology. Technology has been advancing for years. And every time technology advances, somebody's saying, there's the mark. There's the mark. And in the meantime, people are taking on the mark every day and don't even know that they've taken on the mark. And that's the problem. That's the problem that we have. The mark of the beast is the mark of the beast. What? 
Wait a minute. That don't sound right there. So let me say it again. The mark of the beast, and you know who the beast is, the mark is the mark of the beast. I like this. So let me say it again. The mark of the beast is the mark of the beast. You're looking to receive a mark from the beast, and that's why you think that you're going to receive a chip. Because you think that the mark of the beast is something that you get from the beast. But the beast don't give you a mark. The beast has been given a mark. The Bible tells you the mark of the beast. Can I say that again? The Bible tells you the mark of the beast. So the mark of the beast is the mark of the beast. So let's find out what the mark for the beast. Now I'm going to say that a little bit different now. The mark of the beast is the mark for the beast. The mark of the beast is the mark for the beast. So let's find out what the mark of the beast is. Are we in Revelations? Yes, sir. Revelations, the 13th chapter. Mm -hmm. Amen. And this is important, and this is why you have to read and read and read and read, because you will find out what this mark of the beast is. First of all, you got, a, you got the beast, and then you got somebody that's going to be operating in the position of the beast who's going to give their power, gets their power from the beast, and they're speaking on behalf of the beast. Read verse number 11. And I Revelations be, 13 and 11. I, I beheld another beast uh -huh. coming up out of the earth. Uh -huh. And he had two horns uh -huh. like a lamb, and he spoke as a dragon. He spoke as a dragon. He wasn't a dragon, but he just spoke as a dragon. Keep going. And he exercised that all the power of the first beast uh -huh. before him and caused the earth and them which dwell therein to, to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Uh -huh. And he does great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven yes. on the earth in the sight of men. Yes. And declare it and, and deceive at them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles. Now, I want you to look at the mark of the beast because you just read it. Yes. The mark of the beast in verse 12, he exercised all the power of the first beast. In Daniel, Daniel told you that the beast was like a, lion, like a lion, leopard, and a bear. Those were kingdoms of the earth that were not in rulership by God, and those same rulerships are going to be destroyed by the stone that's going to be made without hands, and it's going to be broken down. Those are the systems of the world. That's the beast. That's Babylon. That's Medo-Persia. That's Greek. And who's the fourth one? Rome. That is the beast. How do you know who the beast is? The beast has a system that's in place. Let's talk about that system. Verse 12, he exercised all the power of the first beast before him. And what did he do? And caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast. That's the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is when you allow the, this beast to cause you to worship the second beast, the, the first beast. So how does he cause you to worship the first beast? Christmas. Who did that come from? Babylon. Easter. Who did that come from? Babylon. Sun worship. Who did that come from? That came from the four beasts of the earth. And when you are worshiping that, you are exercising the mark of the beast. So you need to know who the beast is and what does the beast do. Keep going. Whose deadly wound was healed. Okay. And he does great wonders so that he make it fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. I want to stop there. 
Romans, the 16th chapter. And I want you to start with verse 17 no, and 18. I no, I beseech you, brethren. I beseech you, brethren. Mark them which cause division. Now, now, here's the mark of the beast. Anything that's contrary to what God says, he says what? Mark it. Read that again. I beseech you, brethren, uh -huh. mark them which cause division uh -huh. and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned. Uh -huh. and, and do what? And avoid them. Keep going. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus there Christ. There you go. The mark of the beast is whenever you're not doing what God says do, that's the mark of the beast. So the mark of the beast is the mark of the beast. You are the one that marked them. How do you mark them? You have to know what the seal of God is. If you know what the seal of God is, whatever is not the seal of God is automatically the mark of the beast. Because the Bible says mark them. Mark them. Mark them. Identify them. Okay? Identify them. You know, it's so simple when you look at the mark of the beast. You're looking for a chip. In the meantime, you're not marking those that are doing the contrary to the word of God. And listen, I'm not talking about the contrary to the word of God that's out in the world. Amen? And the Bible says, mark them that do what? I beseech ye, brethren, do what? That he mark them which cause divisions. Cause divisions where? And you see, the guy out there in the street ain't causing no division in the church. Amen? Amen. The robber and the thief is not causing division in the church. But the division in the church is when somebody says that the seventh day is the Sabbath, and then somebody else comes and says, no, 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 it's the first day. And they're creating division. Y'all follow me right now? That's the division in the church. Oh, you know, we're not supposed to celebrate Christmas because it's not in the scripture. Oh, no, no, you can do that. God understands because you got a birthday and you're recognizing the birthday of Christ. That's the vision. God says in Leviticus 11 chapter, this is how I want my people to eat. But here comes somebody else. No, no, no. Don't listen to that. You can eat anything you want to. All you got to do is pray for it. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. People are not reading the entire scripture. So what they do is that's the division. The reason why you got so many churches reason why you got so many denominations is because somebody has caused a division in the church. Amen? Amen? And that division has caused this denomination and that denomination and Baptist this and Methodist this and Protestant this and Catholic this and everybody has a division. But he says mark them which cause a division among you and whose offenses are contrary to the doctrine, to the doctrine which, ye have learned. which you have learned. And, avoid and when you see them, avoid them. Yes, sir. Amen. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ. Because they that are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ. But their own belly. But their own belly, their own doctrine, their own philosophy. Keep going. And by good works uh -huh. and fair speeches, uh -huh. receive the hearts of the simple. Listen. Let's go over to, let's go over to back to Revelations. This is the book that everybody, it's almost like kryptonite in most preachers' sermons. They don't want to deal with this. Revelations, the seventh chapter. Because I want to let you know that God is going to seal you. He's going to mark you. This is how you don't receive the mark of the beast, by the way, is to receive the seal of God. Listen to this. Revelations, the seventh chapter. Read verses one through three. 
And after these things, uh -huh. I saw four angels uh -huh. standing on the four corners of the earth, okay. holding the four wings of the earth. These four angels are holding back the four winds of the earth. Now, listen. You all know what a hurricane is like. <laughs> These four winds are coming to do some damage. Everybody says we got a loving, kind Jesus. We serve a loving, kind God. You do. You do. But on the other side, somebody say the other side. On the other side, these angels are holding back the wrath of God. The same loving, kind God has a wrath. And what are they doing? They're holding the four winds. Keep going. Four winds of the earth. Uh huh. That the wind should not blow on the earth, uh -huh. nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Then what happened? And I saw another angel ascending from the east. And another angel came up out of the east. Having the seal of the living God. Having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud I, I want to stop there for a minute. The seal of the living God. A seal demonstrates authority, territory, and rulership. A seal demonstrates authority, territory, and rulership. Who is governing your life? Who is governing your mind? Whose feet are you walking after? The Bible says take the commandments and bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. David says, Thy commandments have I hid in my heart, meaning the heart of his mind, that I may not sin against thee. Talking about the seal right now. So this angel ascending from the east having what? The seal of the living God. What happened? And he cried with a loud voice uh -huh. to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth. Go make the peace on the earth. Yes. Is that what it says? To go no, make peace no. on the earth. To hurt the earth. To go down and negotiate with the earth. To hurt the earth. To go down and, 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 and try to, 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 to negotiate with the earth. To hurt the earth. They are going to hurt the earth. And the sea. And the sea. And listen to this. This angel coming out of the east is telling those that are getting ready to do this, hold up. In fact, he cried with a loud voice. What did he say? Hurt not the earth. Hurt not the earth. Neither the sea. Don't hurt the sea. Nor the trees. Nor the trees. Till we have sealed the servants Until of God. Till we have sealed the servants of God. In their foreheads. In their foreheads. It's not talking about a chip church. It's not talking about a barcode. It's talking about a doctrine. In between your forehead is a doctrine. Y'all follow me that? Uh, in between your eyelids is, a, is your mind. In between here, in between your eyes, behind your forehead is your brain, is your mind. Amen. And you must, as the children said today, you got to listen and you got to read. If you want to get this sealed, you got to listen and you got to read. You got to hear what thus saith the Lord. If you don't hear what thus saith the Lord, you're not going to get it. Amen. You're just not going to get it. I want to go over to, to Deuteronomy, the fifth chapter, and look at what is going to be a sign between us. Listen to read verse number five. I stood between the Lord. I'm sorry, verse 11. Verse 11. Thou shalt verse 11. not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Verse 12. Keep the Sabbath day. To do what? To sanctify it. Uh huh. As the Lord thy God had commanded thee, six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work. But? But the seventh day is a Sabbath of the Lord thy God. 
In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thine ox, nor thine ass, nor any of thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gate. Uh -huh. That thy main servant and thy maidservant may rest as well as thou. And what are we supposed to do? Remember that thou wast a servant in the land of Egypt. Okay. And that the Lord thy God brought thee out thence through a mighty hand and by a stretch out arm. Therefore, the Lord thy God commanded thee to do what? To keep to the Sabbath keep day. the Sabbath day. It's important to keep the Sabbath day. Go over to Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, because I want to know where God's going to put this at. Where, where does all this go? See, you can have the commandments, and then you can have the commandments, but they need to go someplace, church. You can have them here on the pages, and they don't mean nothing. They have to go someplace. This is why we told the children today, you got to read and listen, because what you read and listen to, it goes into the heart of your mind. Read this. Keep going. Verse. Verse 6. Deuteronomy 6 and 6. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto uh -huh. thy children. Teach them who? Un diligently unto thy children. To our children. And thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. Okay. And when thou walkest by the way, uh -huh. and when thou liest down, uh -huh. and when thou risest when up. When you get up, you need to talk about this. When you lay down, you need to talk about this. When you're riding in the car, you need to talk about this. Because we serve a living God. And this is how we certify the seal into the foreheads of our children. What should they do? And thou shalt bind them for a sign. And you're going to bind them about a sign where? Upon thine hand. Upon your hand. And they shall be a frontlet. And they're going to be as frontlets. Between thine eyes. Right here. Right here. Right in your mind. So Satan is going to seal you on your hand or in your forehead. But God is sealing you. Where? your hand, and in your forehead. And if you don't have the mark of God in your, the seal of God in your forehead or your hand, you have been marked. You have been marked. You've been marked with the mark of the beast. And that mark don't come, that mark, church, don't come from the beast. It comes from God. What do you mean, Pastor, that mark comes from God? Yes. The mark don't come from the beast. The mark comes from God. Let's go over to Ezekiel. Ezekiel, chapter 36. Ezekiel, the ninth chapter. You see, everything that's written in the Bible is for our learning. Ezekiel, the ninth chapter, I want you to start with verse 1. He cried all... Wait a second, let me get there. <laughs> Amen. This brother, he got there already. <laughs> Amen. And, and, and here's the part that I want to make with this, because, you see, when we read stories in the Bible, church, they have a significant purpose for the future. You just have to look at it. You want some understanding? Every war in the Bible has a significant relevance. You can almost tie it in with revelations. If you want to know what's going to happen, look at what happened in the old. You can see the significance and the understanding of that in the New Testament. Ezekiel, the ninth chapter. Listen to this. He cried also in my ears. He cried in my ears with a loud voice. With a loud voice. Saying, uh huh. Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near. I want you to call everybody that's got charge over the city, bring them near. Uh-huh. Even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. Everybody's got a weapon, bring everybody. Bring everybody closer. Listen to this. And behold, six men came from the way, 
Off the higher gate. And while Jeremiah, I'm sorry, Ezekiel was having this thought and this dream, what happened was while he was doing this, six men came from the way. Came from the way. Off the high gate. Off the higher gate. Which lied toward the north. That's the heaven. Keep going. And every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And everybody of these six men had a peace pipe in their hand. A slaughter weapon. Everybody had a negotiating agreement in their hand. A slaughter weapon. They had a slaughter weapon in their hand. You know what a slaughter weapon is? When you get slaughtered, that means you are going to die. Amen? The man of God is getting a vision, Brother Reggie, of what is going to happen futuristic. Amen? You gather everybody together. And there were six men that had a slaughter weapon. Keep going. And one man among them was clothed with linen. And one of them was clothed with linen. With a writer's inkhorn. And he had a writer's inkhorn. By his side. By his side. And they went in uh -huh. and stood beside the brazen altar. And stood. Listen, when you got a writer's inkhorn, that means you're getting ready to do some writing. Yes, sir. Keep your finger right here. Scripture comes to my mind real quick. Jeremiah the 17th chapter. Keep your hand right there. You see? When you, got, when you got an ink pen, you're going to do something with that ink pen. You're going to write something. Jeremiah 17, chapter, read verse 1. The, Listen the, to this. The sin of Judah is written with the a pen. The sin of Judah is written, is written with a pen of iron. With a pen of iron and with the point of a diamond and with the listen when it's written with the pen of iron and with the point of diamond it is graven upon the table of their heart and it's graven upon the table of their heart and upon the horns of their altar listen let me lead you to this verse Israel was so wicked Israel was so stiff necked Israel was so rebellious that God saw it he said you know what I'm not going to forget this it is written with a pen of iron and with a what? The, the, the point of a diamond. With the point of a diamond. It is graven. It's graven. Upon the table of their it's hearts. It's graven upon the table of their hearts. The iniquity that they're doing is in them. It's within them. When you read the rest of the chapter, they refuse to keep God's Sabbath. They refuse to keep God's feast days. And God says they were going after other things. They were following the mark of the beast, and it's in them. So let's go back over to Ezekiel, the ninth chapter. And the glory. Because if you don't think God is going to mark it down, church, he's going to mark it down. Listen to this. And the glory of the God of Israel. And the glory of the God of Israel. Was gone up from the cherubs. Listen, the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherubs. Uh -huh. Whereupon he was uh -huh. to the threshold of the house. Uh -huh. And he called to the man clothed with linen. What did he say? Which had the writer's inkhorn on his side. What did the Lord, the Lord say to him? And the Lord said unto him. Listen to this. Go through the midst of the city. I want you to go right in the midst of the city where everybody through, is. Through the midst of Jerusalem. And I want you to go all the way through Jerusalem. And set a mark upon the forehead. And I want you to set a mark on the forehead. Foreheads of the men of the men that sigh, uh huh, that and, are sighing and that cry and that they are crying for all the abominations for all of the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Listen, I want you to go in because there's some people in the city that are looking at what Israel is doing, and some people just, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is happening. You got some people uh, in Israel that says, oh, my God, I can't believe that they passed that law. Oh, my God. That's not the standard of the scriptures. And he says all of them people that are crying and all of those people that are sighing at all the abominations that they see in the midst of. 
Keep and going. And to the others he said in mine hearing. And to the others he said in mine hearing. Go ye after him. Go ye after him. Through the city. I want you to look here. You fellas who have the slaughter weapons in your hand. After this guy gets finished marking on the foreheads of the people who are crying because Israel's not doing my word. What I want you to do? Go ye after him. I want you to go after them. Through the city. Uh-huh. And smite. I want you to smite. Let not your eyes spare. Don't let your eyes spare Neither nothing. Neither have ye pity. This is the same living God that you serve. The same loving God that you serve, that you say God is love and God is meek and God is mercy. Let me tell you something. You fool with God and don't get the mark in your head. He told them fellas, you go through with your slaughter weapon. It's nice. Uh-huh. Slay utterly. Slay utterly. Utterly. Old and young. He don't care if you 99 years old in a wheelchair, as stiff neck as you are, God gonna kill you. The old and young. He don't care if your young child Both. didn't. He? Listen, it don't matter. If you rebellious, your children are rebellious. If you stiff necked, your children are stiff necked. If you celebrate Christmas and Easter, your children are doing it. Why do you think he said visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation? Y'all playing with a God that don't play. You serving a God that don't play. He is not going to spare. It ain't me. It's the scripture said it. You can fool around here. Elder Scully talked about the Sabbath today. You can fool around here and break the Sabbath if you want to. You can fool around and do your own works as you want to. You can fool around and, and do your own pleasures on his holy day if you want to. But I got news for you. You're sealed, not with God, but you just received the mark of the beast. Oh my God. You can do whatever you want to. But let me tell you something. When he comes in Revelations, he's telling the angels to hold back, hold back the earth. And so we can go down and see him. Let me tell you something. You want to know what God's grace is? You want to know what God's mercy is? Right now, while you breathing, you ought to make a change in your heart. That's grace. You want to know what mercy is? Right now, you're hearing the word of God. That's mercy. You think that you're going to do whatever you want to, say whatever you want to, live any way you want to, have Christmas and Easter and bunny rabbits, and God going to say, oh, just have mercy on them. What about me? I've been doing, trying to do the best I can, so he's going to have mercy on you. I might as well just do what you do. I might as well just go and eat pork and do everything else if he's going to have mercy on those that had eat pork. No, sir, ma'am. No, sir, sir. I'm here to tell you that God is saying, if right here in this story, I want you to go through, I want you to mark them that are sighing for the word of God, that are crying out for the abominations. Because, see, if you're crying out about the abominations, that means you're a keeper of them. If you're saying, oh, my God, they're just breaking the Sabbath, that means you're a keeper of them. And he says, mark their heads. Mark them. And then he says, I want you to go in and everybody that don't have that mark. Slay utterly old and young. Slay utterly. Old and young. Old and what? And young. Both what? Both maids and little children. And slay don't mean to slay them out in the spirit. <laughs> slay them out. No, sir. Slay means he's going to kill you. Slay utterly old both and young. Both maids. Young and, women. And little children. Little children. And women. And women. But, but come not near any man upon but whom. But when you start killing folk, don't come near who? Any man whom is the mark and begin 
at my sanctuary. Don't come near any man upon whom is the mark. Yes. Yes. And, and begin at and my sanctuary. And you know where I want you to start? <laughs> right in the sanctuary. Oh. Don't you know judgment begins in the house of God? Be judgment is going to be begin in the church. Preachers better wake up. Yes. You can be there on Sunday morning if you want to, but God's going to mark you. You can bring in the Christmas tree if you want to, but God's going to mark you. February um, or whenever Easter is, you can do whatever you want to. You can bring in that bunny rabbit land eggs if you want to, but I got to guarantee you, when that man comes through and you don't have the seal of God, you automatically got the mark of the beast and they are going to kill you. How do you know they're going to kill you? But Father, we prophesied in your name. Lord, we cast out demons in your name. Lord, we healed in your name. Depart, ye workers of iniquity. I don't even know you. Y'all hear me, church? This is serious business. This is some serious business. This is some serious business. Keep reading. Then, then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. And they began at the ancient men before the house. And he said unto them, defile the house and fill the courts with the slain. With the slain. Go he forth. And they went forth and slew in the city. And it came to pass while they were slaying them that I was left. Full of blood. And the city full of pres perverseness and the city's full of perverseness for they say the lord for has forsaken the, lord the, has earth, the earth and the lord seeth not my god my god church my god verses 16 and 17 you want to know how to how not to receive the mark of the beast anybody that's we talked about that doctrine y'all remember we talked about that doctrine earlier okay so there's only two doctrines there's the doctrine of the beast and there's the doctrine of Christ. Read verses 16 through 17. Jesus answered them and said. What did he say? My doctrine is not mine. Uh-huh. But his that sent See, me. This See, ain't, this ain't Jesus' doctrine. This is the Father's doctrine that sent him. Keep going. If any man will do his will, uh -huh. he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Amen. So some people say, well, you know, I'm, I'm going with the doctrine of Jesus. And, you know, Jesus got his own commandments. I heard that the other day. I like to flip out. <laughs> I saw this debate, and they said, well, you know, we do keep the commandments. Jesus, all of his commandments are listed. Are listed. But Jesus is saying here, my doctrine is not mine. My doctrine belongs to the Father. And if you keep them, you'll know whether they be of God or whether they whether I'm speaking of myself. Because I'm not speaking of myself. He, and didn't he say, I didn't come with no new commandment? He don't have a new commandment. There's no new Sabbath. There's no new dietary uh, eating law. There's no new protocol. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen? Amen. Exodus, the 20th chapter. Exodus, the 20th chapter. Because you know the Bible says the Sabbath is a what? Sign. Sign between me and you. Forever. It's a sign. Did y'all know that? Yes, sir. It's a sign. Yes, sir. You, you go to, somebody asks you to go to McDonald's, you're not going to go to the man with the king with the hat on his, crown on his head, right? You're looking for the M. Amen. And when these people come back, they're going to look for folk who got the seal, who's got the sign. Read the 20th chapter, start with verse number 8 through 11. Remember Sabbath day. To do what? To keep it holy. Uh -huh. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. In it thou shalt not do any work. Yes. Thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, thy manservant, uh -huh. nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, 
nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Uh -huh. For in six days the, the Lord, Lord made heaven and earth, uh -huh. the sea, and all that in them is, and rested on the seventh day. Go to Isaiah the 58 chapter, verse 13 and 14. Isaiah 58 chapter, 13 and 14. I'm talking about the sign. If thou turn away thy foot. If you turn away your what? Foot from the Sabbath. From doing what? From doing thy pleasure. Where? On my holy day. And do what? And call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. What's going to happen? Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord. And I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob, thy father. For the mouth, mouth of, the of the Lord, Lord. had spoken it. Amen, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. <laughs> Ezekiel, the eighth chapter. Read verse 18. Therefore, Will I also deal in fury? God is going to deal in fury. Mine eye shall not spare. And his eyes are not going to spare. Neither will I have pity. And he's not going to have pity. And though they cry in mine ears. And though they cry in his ears with a loud voice. Yet will I not hear he's them. He's not going to hear. Don't play with God. He's not going to pity. He that have an ear. To hear. To hear, let him hear. Let him hear what thus saith the Lord. The service today, I'm finished. The service today, from Elder Scully giving the words of exhortation of the commandments, from Lady Johnson and letting you know that these are the fruits of the Spirit, and she read in the Word, everybody that does these things shall not what? Inherit the kingdom of God. Liars, murderers, adulterers, fornicators. Church, it don't matter what you do. You're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. The mark of the beast is the mark of the beast. It's not a chip. It's not a barcode. It's very important that you understand that the Sabbath is a sign between us and him. His commandments is the seal. If you want the seal, you got to be doing his commandments. You see, in order for the food drug administrator put to put the seal on that meat, there's a set of rules and a set of protocols that it must go by in order for it to receive the seal of inspection, that it pass. And if anybody opens up a meat business or any food product business, and if you don't go by these protocols, you do not operate according to the Food and Drug Administration. And they will shut you down. God ain't shutting nobody down now. He's just letting people receive the mark of whom they're going to accept. And don't be deceived. Don't get, say, I'm going to be saved because I didn't accept the chip. I didn't get the barcode. So I'm good. You can't do the running man dance because you didn't receive the chip. Why are you looking for him in the wrong place? People are receiving the mark every day. And don't know it because they're not reading. The devil has made this thing so complicated that he's got you thinking that the mark of the beast is something that you get from him that's going to be forced upon you. Many. And the Bible says there's going to be a great falling away. You're living in that day right now, church. And how you know you're living in that way? He ain't come yet. He, you know, he's been saying he's coming for years. He ain't come yet. And the Bible said there's going to be scoffers in them last days. Where's his promise? I thought y'all said he was coming. He ain't come yet. I've been hearing that all my life. The Lord is coming. The Lord is coming. The Lord is coming. Scoffers. 
In the meantime, if you just read the news, you see the signs of the Bible unfolding. And some people say, you know, they've been, he been saying he's coming from a lot. I just give up. I'm just going to do me now. And if he don't shorten those days, no flesh will be saved. Because you know what? So many people are pulling and tearing at you, trying to get you to go this way, that way. But I'm here to tell you, the church, to stay rooted, stay grounded, be steadfast.